What's up guys, this is Dino here and today I'll be adding the 7th part to Artif Lieutenant Sir's Sponsor Dash. Before we begin this part, the like goal will be 40 likes in the next 12 hours because that's uh, our new normal from now on. And before we begin this part, I would like to announce that we are at 870 subscribers. So we have only 130 more to go to reach 1k. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't. In the future if you want to unsubscribe you are very welcome to and i will and i would also uh, like to take this chance to announce a new series that i will be beginning from may which will be what if weekly so basically i know that a lot of you guys have uh, suggested a lot of content over the past few months like basically throughout uh, my tenure as a youtuber here all you guys have suggested some pretty good content and uh, when I replied by saying that you should not give away your ideas and you should try to make your own content, you replied by saying that you don't have any means to uh, do so. So what I was thinking that if let's just make a competition like a what if weekly competition where you guys get to submit your stories, I will narrate them of course with your name attached to it and I will narrate like th three stories in one week any specified day and then i will just put uh, a poll in the community post so to see which uh, story that the audience like the best so just some healthy competition nothing nothing uh, serious like it's just for fun just to show uh, the creativity of the viewers and the people who don't have the means to make videos in the near future i will uh, make a video explaining how uh, personally i design my videos and what uh, software i use so that could help the community grow a bit more so that's all that i had to say and now enjoy the video after a good night's sleep ash woke up the next morning feeling a lot better having finally won a gym battle after so long as he walked out of the pokemon center after finishing up with his morning workout he noticed two familiar faces walking towards him he recognized the red redhead as the trainer with the Charmeleon he battled outside of Utah City all those months ago. The other was his companion, Nappa, against whom Ash also had an exciting battle. He asks them, what are they doing here? To which Nappa replies by saying, Silver is here to challenge the gym. Ash says that's great that he's taking the gym challenge. But he doubts Silver will get past some of the stronger gym leaders. He said this in a taunting manner. At this statement, Silver gives Ash a glare which is filled with anything but pleasantries. He then shows him the Thunder Badge, which immediately shocks Ash. No pun intended. How could this guy have beaten Whiskers? The last time they battled, his Pokemon couldn't even defeat his Raichu. And even that version of Raichu was before the training they went through. Silver tells Ash that he knows a lot about him now. How he served as a gym leader of Vermilion, and how he was handed every advantage in the world from a young age. That's the only reason he was able to best him in their first battle. Ash's anger flares up at this statement, a statement which signified a narrative about him that he was too familiar with, a narrative that he went through four months of hellish training to defy. He asks Silver if he's so sure about this, why don't they battle right here and right now? Silver scoffs at the offer and says that the next time they battle each other, it will be on his terms. And this is when he formally issues Ash a challenge. To meet him on top of the Kanto cycling road two weeks from now, to which Ash's answer is obvi obviously yes. Silver then tells Ash that in the meantime, if he's so eager for a battle, Nappa here is waiting on a rematch himself. The bald man walks forward with a Pokeball in his hand and, and a determined look on his face. Ash smiles and throws a Pokeball himself, which releases his Mankey. Nappa sends out a Kingler and the crab Pokemon slams its pincer to the ground. Ash gives Nappa the first move. Nappa orders a Bubble Beam and Mankey avoids it easily before throwing a Karate Chop. However, Kingler uses its larger claw as a shield to block it. Ash orders Mankey to keep up with the offense with Fury Swipes, most of which get blocked by Kingler using its claws as a high guard. But this leaves it open for a low kick, which causes some decent damage due to its size. Mankey gets a bit reckless with the offense which gives Kingler a chance to connect with a water pulse which taps Mankey in a huge bubble before bursting open. Mankey was a bit shaken up but not done by any means. Ash compliments Nappa on the move 
to which the bald replies by saying it's a move he taught to his taught to his kingler by a technical machine that silver won after defeating misty ash replies by saying that's great so in response he will use a move given to him by a gym leader as he orders a rock tomb napa being familiar with the move orders kingler to smash the rocks with crab hammers while this battle is going on ash thinks to himself that if napa is able to make improvements of this level he can only imagine how far silver has come ash orders another karate chop but this time kingler uses its pincer to grab manki's hand and start charging up another waterfalls but this is a situation they have been in before with lorelei and cloister before kingler could hit the waterfalls manki leaps into the air with kingler in hand and slams it down with a powerful seismic toss and ending the battle in fashion Nappa recalls Kingler and Silver tells him to get it to the Pokémon Center. Silver tells Ash that he's not impressed and that he's not utilizing Mankey's speed to its fullest potential. Ash replies by saying that he should focus on his upcoming battle because he because he will show up 2 weeks later and Silver will need all the potential in the world to even remotely stand a chance against him. With that, he departs for Celadon. Silver moves on ahead towards the Ghostly Gym and upon entering is greeted by the former elite four member and the current gym leader of the lavender gym agatha the old lady instantly recognizes silver and referred to him as giovanni's son silver almost felt as if his head was snapped backwards at the mention of the name but he but he took a deep breath and calmed himself down before formally issuing his challenge agatha says she accepts it and then states the rule for the battle before throwing out a pokeball which releases a haunter silver sends out a machoke which surprises Agatha but regardless she gives the challenger the first move and Silver orders a rock tomb Hunter is able to dodge the falling boulders fairly easily and fires off a shadow ball Machoke tries to dodge the attack but is not fast enough to do so and gets caught partially Agatha taking advantage of this connection orders another shadow ball but the fighting type uses a bullet punch attack to stop the shadow ball before it could be executed Hunter however fades into the shadows and attacks with a sludge bomb from above which stuns the fighting type long enough for another shadow ball silver getting a bit frustrated orders a move which catches everyone off guard the dark type move payback but once again machoke is just too slow to follow silver's orders and hunter barely avoids the attack which could have definitely been the finishing move and in turn Mach- hunter lays out the finishing touch with another sludge bomb The redhead recalls his fallen pokemon with a disappointing look. He then sends out his second pokemon, Sandslash. And now that Silver has seen most of Hunter's moves, it doesn't take much effort for the ground type to intercept Hunter's offense with a shadow claw, thus making the battle even. Agatha sends out a gold bat in response to which Silver recall, recalls his Sandslash and sets out another ground type, Gligar. The two bat pokemon screech at each other and take it to the air. A back and forth battle ensues between them. And although Gligar has the power advantage, Golbat is the much more experienced flyer and has the speed advantage on top of it. After a closely contested battle, both Pokémon knock each other out with a double steel wing collision. Sandslash is back next for Silver and Agatha sends out her Gengar. Sandslash has to survive early adversity as it gets overwhelmed by the ghostly moments and the sheer speed of the Gengar. But once it uses a sandstorm, the tide of the battle changes quickly with Sandrush kicking in. And after a long and grueling battle, Sandslash is able to outlast Gengar by an extremely close margin, thus giving Silver the hard-fought victory and his fourth gym badge. Meanwhile, Ash had finally made his way to Celadon after a rather unpleasant journey through the underground tunnel. After getting a much-needed shower at the Pokémon Center, Ash was ready for his next gym battle. As he exited the Pokemon Center, he noticed he noticed a familiar face. It was the same fraud salesman who convinced convinced him to buy Slowpoke in the first place. As the man noticed Ash, he immediately tried to run away. But in an ironic twist of fate, Ash gave gave him chase and was able to catch him by ordering his Slowbro to use a psychic attack. The man was petrified to see the psychic Pokemon, and this was followed by Ash reporting him to to the police and finally getting back his lost money. That's right, people. Ash is rich again. As he saw the man getting es- esco- escorted in a police car, he felt something tugging his leg. He looked down to see a Pikachu frantically trying to get his attention. He notices its heart-shaped tail and recognizes that this Pikachu is a female. He tries to understand what she is trying to tell him, 
but due to the sheer franticness of her speech, he is unable to do so. So he sends out his Raichu, who is able to communicate with its pre-evolution fairly easily. And after that, he tells Ash that she is looking for her friend, an Eevee. Just then a girl comes running from the Pokemon store, asking the Pikachu if she found the Eevee. She then looks at Ash and pauses for a moment, saying he looks familiar, before snapping back to her senses and asking him if he has seen an Eevee, to which he replies he has not, but will be glad to help her look for it. She thanks him and, in and introduces herself as Serena, and the search for the Eevee begins. Ash asks Serena how did she end up losing it in the first place and she replies by saying that her Eevee likes to wander around random places but usually it's just a few, few blocks away but this time he's nowhere to be found and they have to participate in a contest battles, battle finals a few hours from now. Ash had heard of contest battles obviously but he personally thought that they were too goofy for his taste. Now obviously he was not going to tell it to her straight to her face. They searched the entire town alley by alley. But Eevee was nowhere to be found. Serena sat down in despair as the contest was only 30 minutes away. Ash offered to continue searching for the Eevee and meanwhile Serena could participate in the contest with another Pokemon. But she said it will be impossible to come up with contest moves in the last minute with the other Pokemon. Just then a voice interrupted them and to Serena's relief her Eevee came running to her onto her lap. It was accompanied by a Leafeon and a woman whom Ash recognized as Erika, the gym leader of Celadon City. She told them how Eevee wandered in into the gym and was accidentally hit by an effect spore from a parasect and fell asleep. But it's all good now and, it and he's healthy. So with that, Serena got to participate in the contest. Ash decided to watch the battle and was amazed to see the highly innovative moves on display. His opinion on Pokemon contest battles had changed drastically. Her Pikachu used a move called Zippy Zap where it shrouded itself in electricity and let out rapid bursts of thunder attacks. Maybe this was something he could use. Contest battles were not so bad after all. In the end, Serena ended up winning the contest and the ribbon by a sizable lead in points. Afterwards, both of them were in the Pokemon Center discussing the battle, where Ash was asking her about the moves that Pikachu and Eevee used. Serena then realizes that she never asked him what his name was. Upon learning that it was Ash, she asked him if he was from Pallet Town, to which Ash replies by saying that he was, and how did she know that? Then it all came back to Serena, and she told him that Ash helped her in Professor Oak's summer camp, and she remembered him getting chosen by Lieutenant Serge as his student at the end. Ash tells her that he remembers it. She then asks him if he's here to challenge the gym, to which she replies by saying yes. Serena asks if she can watch the battle, which Ash is perfectly okay with. The next morning, Ash and Serena arrive at the gym, where they and were greeted by Erika, who congratulated Serena on her, on her win. The proctor announced it will be a two-on-two -two doubles battle, which initially surprised Ash, but he knew exactly what duo to use here. He sent out a duo that was anything but ideal in this situation, Mankey and Raichu, and the tension was on display right from the start. Erika sent out the duo of Valpium and, and Bellosum. The battle starts with Raichu firing off a thunderbolt at Valpium and Mankey darting forward with a karate chop towards Bellosum. However, just before their attacks could land, both the grass type Pokemon switched places. This was not Ali's switch. But then Ash noticed something, the sunlight coming from above. Of course, both of them had the chlorophyll ability and were using it to their fullest potential magnifying their speed to a 2 times multiplier. Mankey's Karate Chop landed on Valpium, but it barely faced it, and Raichu's Thunderbolt, although was able to push Bellosum back, it was nowhere near decent damage. Both of them then, then fired a double solar beam, which Raichu and Mankey dodged. However, the flaws in their battling style was evident. Raichu and Mankey were trying to individually knock one of them out, while Valpium and Bellosum were almost acting as a single Pokemon, coordinated with everything. Serena was watching this battle and realized that Erika's style was heavily based on Pokemon contest battles. So she tells Ash to focus on synergizing his moves instead of trying to take them out individually. Ash, Ash replies by saying that's what he is trying to do. But both Raichu and Mankey are just heading, are just battling on their own as at the moment. Finally, it takes both of them a sludge bomb and a solar beam each to come to their senses. 
as they both realize they have to work together and even upon realizing this the battle is not easy at all while pium is acting as the big tank absorbing most of the attacks while belosum is continuously firing solar beams behind behind valpium using it as a shield and they also switch roles sometimes with belosum using a petal blizzard to distract both both raichu and manki and valpium firing off sludge bomb from behind it and this continues for a while until finally raichu and manki are able to form a decent enough game plan this involves raichu charging forward with electric type or with electric type attacks using it to counter any attacks fired by the grass types and manki using this as a distraction to get in close and grab hold of any one of them thus preventing them from moving so quickly and this strategy starts to work eventually the bad with the tide of the battle turning around and just in time the sunlight finally fades away, fades away bringing the both grass type pokemon down to their normal speed and this is where raichu and manki shine now with the speed advantage back back in manki's favor it blitzes forward and connects with multiple karate chops and fury swipes on both of them raichu takes this distraction as a perfect opportunity to wrap its tail around belosum and reel it in for a super powerful mega punch with which knocks it out cold valpium is the only one remaining standing now and it uses a lot of its remaining energy to to fire off a sunny day attack once again bringing its speed up but this but this time due to it being a 2 on 1 she is having a, a lot more difficult time and also because she had taken some decent damage and was not as fresh as she was in the beginning of the battle however despite this valpium is able to set up a perfect solar beam which he, which is heading straight for raichu but just in the last moment manki pushes raichu away and tries to tank the solar beam as if to prove prove a point to raichu as raichu watches manki is trying to guard up to the solar beam and hold it back instead of dodging it and just then for a brief moment it started to glow ash thinking that it was evolving into its next stage started cheering excited excitedly and serena was also really excited to see an evolution taking place right in front of her but just then a huge explosion took place and when they and when the dust cleared it was revealed that manki had been knocked out even though it was on the verge of evolving something was holding it back and the power of the solar beam was just too hard for it to tank thus bringing the battle into one on one ash checked on manki and recalled it into his poke and tried to recall it into its pokeball but manki slapped it away it wanted to watch the battle till the very end and so it did raichu and valpium having exhausted more most of the energy most of their energy just engaged in a straight up attack both making absolutely no attempts to dodge any of the oncoming attacks onto them valpium at one point try, tries to use a sleep powder but raichu uses its tail to jump into the air and then try to connect with a body slam to which valpium connects with a sludge bomb straight in its face raichu is taken a taken a back by bit and is poisoned by the attack but this is something that ash and raichu had been working on fighting while being poisoned ever since losing to janine in the fuchsia city gym battle they had been working on their poison endurance in the safari zone and this was evident as it almost seemed as if even though the poison was taking was chipping away at raichu's health its cardio was not diminishing at all and eventually it was able to overwhelm the tired valpium and start to connect with mega punches after mega punches some on its face some on its bulb and eventually this was too much for valpium to handle as it crumbled forward and fell down have no longer having the will or the str- or the strength to battle erika recognizing it calls a stop to stop to the match thus forfeiting the battle and giving ash the victory and his fourth gym badge overall erika congratulates ash and says that not many trainers would have been de- able to, able to defeat this duo and ash did did it with a duo of po- a team of pokemon who were not co- compatible at all so he deserves so he deserves all the praise in the world ash replies by saying that although his pokemon were not compatible they were still a team as manki looks on with a slight with a slight hint of resentment it just could not digest the fact that raichu was once again able to surpass it but for the meanwhile it had to admit that winning the battle felt good after they exited the gym ash asked serena where she was headed to next and serena told ash 
that she only had one more and that she, that she had one more contest to win and that contest was to take place in Saffron City and after that she would head on to the grand festival which would take take place in Vermilion Ash asked her if she would like to travel with him because he will be heading to Saffron for a gym battle it will be the same case in the Vermilion City as eventually he had to head back to challenge Viscus for the Thunder Badge Serena was taken aback by the, by the offer but nonetheless decided was happy that Ash asked her to travel alongside him so with that they both set off for the next stop which which would be at the top of the cycling road where Ash would have his much awaited rematch against Silver and guys that's where I'll be I will be ending this part so I hope you guys enjoy it stay safe and god bless